What is up, everybody? Welcome here to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and tonight is a very special edition of Rockin' Robbie Live with, let me bring in my co-host, it's the Brianiac. It's actually over hard. How are you doing, buddy? Station. Station. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing great. You know why we're doing great? No, I don't. It's because we have a returning guest on the show tonight. And I couldn't be happier to invite once again onto the show a man who is a comic book writer. He is a comic book fan. He is a fan of story, pop culture, and he's got something really cool and new and special. And by the way, he wrote this little book that we all love here in the PCP Army called Finger Guns. Maybe you heard of it. But ladies and gentlemen, give a nice hearty station to Justin Richards Station. <laughs> oh, wow. What an intro. Thank you. And the finger gun shirt, Brian. I love it. Yeah, you're wearing the shirt. Show it off. Yeah, bring it up. Bring it up. He did there for a go. sec. That's oh, awesome. look at that. It's a good nice. looking shirt. It is a good looking yeah, shirt, and it. it was a good looking book. So thank you so much. Last time we <laughs> talked to you, the book wasn't complete. Now it's complete. It was amazing. Yeah. You know, huh. and I really hope that we get more because there's so much more story to tell there, Justin. And I'm just, there. and I know you got a lot you want to get there's, out, right? Yeah. Did I? Uh, yeah, did, I, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on on the ending and how I I, I purposely kind of left y'all hanging. Yeah, well, I, you know, I do this show called The Weekly Comic Book Review, and so I already covered it, so I don't want to bring it up again. I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's what I always tell people. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he repeat himself. I... <laughs> yeah, you have to go back and find the videos. It's, it's a little daunting. I actually did watch Sometimes. that video. So. You did, and I appreciate that. No, I really liked it. I mean, there's so much more, though. I like there, there's, and you left it open, and, and, there's a lot of stuff that's unanswered. There's a lot of journey still left to be told. And, and I like that. I think this book could go on and on and on um, with the way that you got it set up. Be like, you could add in the idea. I'm sure you have these ideas, but like there are other people that could do this kind of like a Stranger Things thing. Like, oh, there's other 11s. You know, there's other people that can do different things with their different fingers or whatever. I don't know. But I really like the ending. It was not the ending I was expecting, bro. You broke my heart. <laughs> You really did. You broke my heart. You gutted me out. And I was just like, oh, well, kudos, Justin. You, you did it. So I, I, I love the ending. What did you think, Brian? Oh, yeah. I thought it was perfect, actually. But uh, yeah, because I, uh, yeah, it's not often you get your heart broken at the end, you know, and everything. And I, and I, I really, I, I really dug that. And, and also, like, I look at a lot of those, uh, you know, because there's, cause they have difficult journeys ahead of them. And so I, I thought it was good to kind of, leave it with the, you know, that it wasn't an ending ending. Right. I mean, you know, there's, mm -hmm. you know, cause I mean, our lives are all built around a journey, you know, not, not really a destination, you know, or anything yeah. like that. So I thought that was like, I thought that was really beautiful. Yeah. We tried to leave it with more of a crossroads than a, than a defined ending. And I definitely, I didn't plan on ending happy from the very get go. <laughs> um, yeah. You no know, good I, stories end happy. I mean, it all depends on when you end the story, right? If a story goes like five weeks longer, maybe it's not a happy ending, you know? Right. But Yeah. And I always wanted Sadie to be on this sort of villain arc. You know, she's not really a villain, but I I always thought that it would, that was kind of where I wanted her to end was like on this path where we don't know where she's going to go. Yeah, I like that. So, comics will um, break your heart is here, by the way. And Jennifer says, comics will do that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Heard that one somewhere, I think. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, some guy. By the way, Nick says, Station, I just backed our boy Justin. Looking forward to the new book. Oof, thank you. I have read the new book, Nick. It's really freaking good. A Silent Night. Um, tell us a little bit about it, Justin. It's on Kickstarter right now. You're like halfway through the campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, tomorrow makes halfway. Heck yeah, tell us about it. So yeah, this is a, it's a little bit different because it's not a traditional comic. Um, it's a little shorter and it's a little bit more variety. So I'm calling it a zine uh, because there's really only five pages of comic book story in it. It's a very brief story, but it's paired with um, a wonderful pinup gallery from some of today's like literal top artists in the industry from Liana Kangas and Daniel Warren Johnson to Megan Hutchison. Yeah, you can see all the freaking names right there that I'm proud to have on that cover. 
Um, and yeah, so it's me exploring some of my biggest fears because I battle with mental health uh, with anxiety and depression. And I had this thought one night that occurred to me that one of my biggest fears was being alone with my own thoughts. And so I kind of turned that into a literal metaphor with the story. And then it just kind of grew from there. I, uh, so the, you got this, you got, there's a silent story in there with Gavin Guidry on the artwork, which the artwork is amazing. And yeah. the story is very effective. Like it gets, even though there, you know, you hear sometimes you're like, oh, that, that there were no words in that comic. And somebody's like, oh, that feels like it was too breezy. There's a lot to sink in in this zine because you got the comic book story and then you got some amazing poetry that I really, really liked. And, and you did oh, the whole you. like ad lib thing, the mad lib thing um, yeah. that I thought was a really clever way to kind of make it sink home. Um, and you could also have fun with that if you really wanted to. Um, yeah. All in all, it's a really cool package, man. How did it all come together? slowly <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes a little painfully but um no it's you know everybody was i just had the thought of the five page story that i wanted to get made and gavin's a buddy and he was looking for some work and i was looking for some art and so we just worked together on that and fun story this project um because val halverson is the colorist on both the cover and the five page short story. And he contributed a pinup to the pinup gallery. A beautiful um, pin -up. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, they're all really great, of course. Um, but yeah, that's actually how I met Val was I was looking for a colorist for this. And my buddy Christoph, he knew had been working with Val and was like, he's really good. So that's yeah. awesome. And of course, Val is the artist on finger guns. So yeah, to make that yeah. connection if case they don't know but y'all know finger guns <laughs> yeah so um yeah and then from there i was like well five pages of a short story is it like maybe i could pitch it to anthology but i felt like it was something else on its own and then so i was trying to come up with a way to like pair it with something that would make it worth people's money Mm -hmm. if i were to, to print it and and try to offer it because you know i don't want to charge five bucks for five pages of silent story you know yeah um so that's where i started talking to some friends and was like hey you know if you, if you got some time i was thinking about doing this pinup gallery and five amazing artists all got back to me and said yes and then from there i again like i wanted to really add more content to really make it more of a variety make it actually fit the definition of a zine in my opinion and yeah. also uh the last couple of things in there with the affirmation cards and the sad lib i really wanted to have like something that was more active with the book and something that was better at being a little bit more hopeful than the story and my my letter and the pinups are um so that it's got that nice brevity to like, you know, cleanse the palate right at the end of a good, like cry that you might get out of the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, the, uh, the affirmation cards I thought were a really nice touch. It's cool. There's a, there's one of the tiers as you get like protectors for them. So like mm -hmm. you can carry them around and whatnot. I think that was super cool. And all of the pinups are fan freaking tastic and they all are powerfully accurate representations of what the book is, which is about the monster of depression, you know? Yeah. And, we, I think we've all struggled with this, you know, in and out. And it's about whether or not we'd like to admit it. And I think that you are doing a very brave thing with coming out with this book. And you have a nice essay in there as well that was very powerful to me. Um, because there are, there are tons of times in your own life where you're like, oh, I'm just feeling a little low today. You know, it's almost like we feel like it's a weakness to admit that mm -hmm. we're not like all always there at all times. Right. But it's the truth of human nature and it's something that exactly. we need to work on. And, and, and you're working on um, you're working in conjunction with what's the organization. Uh, so they're the ADAA, which is the anxiety and depression association of America. Okay. And I think that's super cool. And you reference all the stuff and like, you know, not to spoil anything, but in your essay, you even say like, you know, it's, I used to think being depressed was about like just, having suicidal thoughts all the time, but it's, there's so many more levels and nuances to it um, and anxiety and the things that you were, 
you were describing, I was like, man, that's like, that's the same kind of stuff I've dealt with where any small inconvenience will just like throw you off. And yeah. it takes you, you have to really focus to try to get it back. Um, but it's the idea of working on it, you know, and, and recognizing it, admitting it and, and, and understanding that it's part of our journey, but it's not the end of our journey. And I, I found the book to be very inspiring, um, even though it is, mm -hmm. it is obviously sad, you know, but it's, it's very powerfully inspiring to me. So I think uh, you did a great job with this and I'm encouraging everybody to support it on Kickstarter. There's a link in the description. Um, we got like 15 days left or whatever. Like y'all do it like 14 days. I don't know. Do it. This book is awesome. It's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about what they can get when they back the book, Justin. Yeah. So we've got, you know, you can get in real cheap with just a $5 digital tier. The physical book is 10 bucks with, I tried to keep shipping pretty cheap as like, I did a lot of research in how to, and how to get the best use of out of my money with shipping. So I could keep it at five bucks for the standard and uh, five bucks for any physical item that's added um, that like adds weight anyway, because like, if you get the, we have the, we're doing mini prints of the full pinup gallery. There's five pinups in the book and you can get a print of each one for five bucks each or if you get all five you get a 15 percent discount um and those <clears throat> those don't add anything to the shipping but we have an amazing glow-in-the-dark enamel pin that was designed by uh val halverson <laughs> his name's all over this book uh which is great i loved having my my partner in crime help me out with this one. Hell yeah and yeah, yeah awesome. that one adds like a couple bucks but everything else it's flat flat five bucks um you can get pretty much any physical format of finger guns that you might desire yeah um you can get the trade uh i do have a limited amount of of everything and those have been hot so i think there's only like eight left or something um and then are yeah, they autographed get, I'm going to send out, so at the end of Kickstarter campaigns, you know, they do like the survey thing. Uh -huh. I'm going to have a survey question on there that says, do you want your stuff autographed? And people nice. can choose. That way, if people want to do the con thing and come find me and ask, awesome. If not, if you want your shit, if you want a signature on it, I'll gladly throw that on there for anybody that wants it. Nice. I hate it when I back a Kickstarter and it's not signed. And I'm just like, come on. Could somebody just sign if the postman sign it for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> like just pretend, man. Your name's Justin. Just put it on there. Uh, but yeah, so you can grab uh, all three number one finger guns variants. There's a pack of those. There's a pack of one through five of all of Val's covers. So you can snag a full series run of the single issues. Um, and we did have some glitter covers of issue one, the Jen Hickman, uh, as an add on, they sold out mighty quick, but, uh, maybe, maybe there's more on the way, you know, we'll see. Did you just yeah. say glitter? Yeah. Because you just really piqued my interest again. Like, yeah. Glitter? Yeah. I don't know if how many yeah. people are even aware because we kind of got screwed by COVID, um, yeah, they we printed a special edition cover for issue one of Jen Hickman's uh, C cover. Uh, their cover got this spot gloss glitter. Actually, uh, they're not up here, but yeah, they're really awesome. They're sparkly and 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 pretty, and uh, they didn't get to be released at Emerald City Comic Con as an exclusive like they were supposed to be. So. Like they were just kind of thrown up on Vault's website and kind of, in my opinion, flew under the radar. Yeah. Oh, thank you for backing everyone who backs, everyone who even just, if you just share it or send it around, like it means the world to me. This is a really near and dear to my heart project. So anything uh, that any shares or anything just really means everything. Um, but yeah, so. We had a handful of those. There's only like 500 in print. And mm -hmm. I had a few. I had eight to throw up on the sale or up on the campaign. And they went pretty quick. I had them signed by Val. So I had, I'm going to sign them too. So those are double signed. And um, I did confirm I can get some more. So I just don't know how many. But uh, 
yeah, if uh, if you guys keep your eyes on the updates, because uh, any anything I add will get will be sent in the updates that uh, go straight to your email if you're a backer. Uh, yeah, I'll let everybody know the second those go live if I get some more. And they'll be gone. Going. And they'll be gone like that, <laughs> I guarantee you. Y'all. Yeah, get I was actually it. able to snag a copy uh, a while back. I was trying to find it. I know I had it out earlier, but uh, but yeah, for this is the unglitter version of their cover. Yes. Their, uh, uh, that's but, is my... Yeah. Actually, okay. Now I gotta... I will give you a treat. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> we get a treat. This is great. This is why you need to join us every Thursday night when we do these conversations here on Pop Culture Philosophers because you never know what you're going to get. You get treats sometime because you got to treat yourself. You got some red in your hair, man? It's actually, it's called Sexy Pink. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. So here's the original of that cover. Oh, Brian, look at that. Oh, my goodness. And that's sick. Wow. Try to get a good shot of it. Bro. <sighs> yeah. That is gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. I had to I had to talk to Jen. Uh it's it's my favorite image ever. Cause yeah. I didn't even talk to them about I didn't know they were doing that like any covers for us. They ended up doing a variant for every issue, which was amazing. Yeah. I have them all. They're <laughs> great. Yeah, um, and their art's great. Did you read Lonely Receiver? Like, oh my yes, goodness, Hickman's artwork goodness. is brilliant in that book. Yeah, they did great on. They were on Test as well with Chris yeah, Sabella. Test, test Man, is like one of the one most of like cerebrally yes. dense books I've read. Like, I still feel like I didn't quite quite capture everything. Uh, I don't like, think I did either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that but, yeah. that's like I've I've been following Chris for a while, and and really I think that I I think that's one of his best, like far and away. Uh, yeah. My friend, I mean. yeah, my friend Lindsay's in one of the uh, issues because Jen had tweeted out one time, like, like, does anybody want to be in a comic book? And Lindsay was like one of the first ones. And so her picture is like, she's like somebody on the bus. And then at the end of the issue, she's one of the dead bodies. And I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, I should get her to sign that issue, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Jen, like, like I said, I didn't even know they were doing the cover, and I found out when when everyone else found out. Basically, like Vault sent me the tweet <laughs> that was like, "Check oh, wow. it out," and I was like, "This is amazing!" And it like it captured everything that I had in mind for this series in one image. I loved it so much, so I was like, "Yeah, please, 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 let me buy that from you." <laughs> and a glitter version of it. Yeah, actually, wow. I found I found one, so I can show <gasps> off some. Some glittery goodness. Oh my god! <laughs> and as you can see, signed by Mr. Halverson. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I'll be signing so jelly. Those as well. So jelly, but of course you got one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's my freaking book. <laughs> You'd be surprised how sometimes certain people don't get copies of of their books, depending I on bet. the publisher. I would really hope that. The brothers Wazel like take care of they comics. Do. I'm, I'm they sure do. they do, right? I mean, yeah, I've reason, heard some horror stories though. <laughs> the reason I'm yeah. getting more of these glitter covers is one of the Wazel brothers. So nice. Yeah, what, he was, what, he was great. Great. I'm Pillars staring the at a stack of them right now. You want me to send them? Yes, please. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Pillars of the community. That's great. Those brothers. Yeah, hundred percent. Brian, what do you think about the whole idea of a silent night? Uh, well, I, I do want to echo what Robert was saying. I think it's very brave, uh, even though, you know, I mean, I, I know mental health is, you know, it is getting more attention and more acceptance and things like that, but it's still, it's never easy to talk about that stuff. I've, I've struggled with a lot of issues myself over, over the years and uh, yeah. a lot of close family and friends and things like that. Um, and uh, so I do want to commend you for, you know, putting this out there and everything. Um, Thanks. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, to, you know, uh, get a chance, you know, get a chance to read it and everything. And, and uh, I didn't realize that I, I probably could have made that connection that it was a silent <laughs> comic, but I, I don't know. Those never have never once bothered me ever reading. Cause I, I mean, I like, I, uh, they're usually some of the most powerful ones, you know, at the, at the end of it, when you're done reading it. Um, Cause like, I don't know. It, I mean, you know, it puts some more work on the reader a little bit <laughs> to like, 
what all is in this that's you know that's trying to get across and everything like that but uh but with that i mean like how is that working with the with the artist when it's silent I mean, is it uh do you still kind of like uh work in like detailed panel descriptions or like how does that so so you caught me a little bit uh in that i didn't originally plan for it to be silent actually the oh. the script has uh dialogue but and maybe that's what helped carry everything i mean so gavin did all the heavy lifting kind of on his own because when he drew it i didn't go hey draw this so clear that it could be read without words despite the fact that i have words um, but when he sent it back and i started reading it i was like oh this works really well on its own and i liked it more that way because it allows whoever's reading it to kind of interpret it themselves and get out of it what they need and so you know maybe not every single panel will will be directly uh you know like feed exactly what i had in mind from that panel into your brain but it'll i think the overall message holds up really well and and then, yeah, it fit with the name of A Silent Night, which was like, that's what I named it initially. And it just fit. I was like, yeah, no, it's already called that. It works really great. And so I decided to go ahead and leave it how it was. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I can definitely I'd, I'd relate. I'd like to when see you're... that original script. I'll tell you that. I was curious about, I thought about maybe like offering you know, a, a tier where I could send that for, you know, a buck or something. I don't know, like, but, you know, it's so weird of, like, what do you charge for a script? You know? I don't know. Are you going to sign it? <laughs> sure. I'll print it out. I'll, I'll use some, kill some trees and sign them. That's a thing some writers do. You know, they, uh, they sign scripts. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it. <laughs> I was I like, that's maybe, a weird thing. <laughs> I would, yeah. I would maybe do that if it was some iconic issue that, that I wrote, you know, like if I get a play <laughs> in the, in the big two sandbox someday and I have something that people want to want to read like that, then sure. Maybe I'd do it. But like, yeah. Uh, like when you do crisis on infinite earths part two, Exactly. Like, I'm, I'm excited for that. Hey, you just wait, hey, guys. What are you for... doing reading my notes? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The book is great, y'all. I have read it. Brian, did you get a chance to read it? I, I haven't. No. I... Oh, man. My bad. I should have sent it to you. I'm sorry. Oh, I need yeah, to send you wait. Beckstar before next week, don't I, Brian? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I, we, we took, yeah. Yeah. It'd You're be right. good to get I'm, caught up. I'm a terrible friend to Brian, by the way, Justin, just so you know. <laughs> I don't I even know that. why he puts up with me. I don't even know why. Yeah, he, it's because he, he yeah. has such well, a I mean, puke-covered wall he, that he doesn't have other friends. <laughs> a puke-covered wall! <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. That's that's what I was thinking when I chose the color. Just go over hard. You know, just keep going. <laughs> so. That's your motto. Hashtag over but, hard. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, Robbie said he keeps me on here just to make him look at it. So you know, and it, it's not the only place where that like that's actually applied. So you know, I I think I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I'm, you're doing I'm a great job, Brian. Brian, we appreciate it. So. Brian went so far today. We have a Facebook group, Justin, called the PCP Army. Brian mm -hmm. went so far today, so overly hard, to take a picture of him cooking his over hard eggs this morning. Nice. <laughs> and that's exactly yeah. what our Facebook group is for. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and I went a little too hard actually. I burned him. So that was uh, <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. Super really over hard. Just went too hard, man. Something oh, I should have happened. I should have I should have snagged that pick and so I could have just kept putting putting it up tonight. <laughs> just rest assured, bro, it's coming. And also, by the way, Jay Strick saw that picture and he laughed and he goes, It's messed up. He's not even finished cooking them. They're not even over hard yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he hasn't flipped them yet. You can tell. He's like, because those look like some not done eggs. <laughs> they were not done yet. Yeah, I was too excited to take the picture to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you didn't, because then he would just said burned eggs. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like, like your eating. eggs, Justin? Like, if you wake up in the morning and you're gonna make some eggs, how do you make them? I'm a simple scrambled kind of guy. Are you like four years old? Yep. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> when we did no, the it's, panel, it's the Jay thing that I've that. had since I was since I can remember, I've always eaten scrambled eggs. Scrambled like I'll eggs eat, I'll eat a great poached egg from time to time. I love that. The forget trying to learn how to poach your own egg. Uh, I'd rather just throw it in a pan and and chop it up. You know. Yeah. Right. 
I can't tell you how many times I've tried. I've started making omelets and they just wound up scrambled eggs. You just like fuck it and you just like go with it. You just like whatever. Bueller's in the house. He says support hey. Justin's Kickstarter campaign. Fourteen days to go. Let's make it happen. I agree, Bueller. It's really freaking good. I think Bueller told me that he liked it as well. And as Nick says, Bueller knows best. Um, <laughs> you're familiar with Bueller because you actually yeah. got to meet the man himself. I have one of twice. the the. One of the pillars of the community, right? You are on his show. I'm so envious of you. He's trying to he's trying to raise money for me so we can go. I can fly out to Portland for Rose City Comic Con or whatever. There you go. Uh, and that's if in you September. Go, I'll, I'll likely be there. Uh, Brian, let's do it, man. Brian, you want to go to Portland in you September? Know I do. Let's go. You know I do. Oh, you got family there. Ibrahim's there, right? Your cousin. And Ibrahim will be there at Rose City too. So. Oh, yeah, I, I just I just got my first vaccine shot, so I'm I'm on the way. Nice, almost nice. immune. Nice. They're open to everybody here in our state finally, 16 and up. And I was Can like, I wow, up yet, Robbie? Wow, way to go, Alabama. I, I, not yet, but I'm about to. I'm busy man, Brian. But yes, I, I'm about to. I got my first shot. Yeah. Good thing I didn't sign up for that Johnson Johnson one you were telling me about, Brian. <laughs> That was before the news broke. I mean, I, I, know, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. I'm just I'm smashing <laughs> with you, man. <laughs> so, which yeah. house are you, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Moderna. I got that one. I'm, oh, so. nice. I'm also house Moderna. Ooh, yeah. I'll, I have to join yeah. you guys so that we can go play Pokemon Go together and, and take over yeah. gyms. Because <laughs> that's how it yes. works, right? <laughs> I've been, yep, I'm, exactly. like, I'm waiting for like an SNL skit where they do this, like where they're just like, like there's like exclusive clubs where they talk crap about each other, where they're like, oh, Pfizer only has, you know, this uh, and like needs a third b- booster after a year. That's garbage. And they're like, well, you have 1% less effectiveness against the disease. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is where yeah, my brain like goes that. when I'm. That's, maybe you should write that book. <laughs> maybe you should write that comic. Maybe, maybe that's the next Kickstarter. Who knows? I mean, yeah. Game of Thrones meets modern day vaccines. <laughs> yeah. What made you decide to go to Kickstarter with this project? Uh, this kind of a lot of things actually. There's a little bit of the size of it because it is um, the interior pages are there's 16 of them, and you know that's it's not a lot. And I didn't think it would be, you know, I couldn't think of a publisher that is like looking for zines and ver- like variety zines. And, you know, if I did it myself, then I could partner with the ADAA and try to get it out there with them, you know, like to spread more awareness. And I could kind of, I don't know, I guess keep control of it. And it feels like I like the feel of how it's kind of in, like it's really indie and it's different and weird-ish. You know, I don't know if weird's the right word, but uh, yeah, I just felt like something that was something that I could do myself and I have plans for more Kickstarters and I felt like this was a really good first Kickstarter campaign to do yeah. so that I could get the experience under my belt before I try something bigger than this. Yeah. Right. And a, a lot, a lot of people are having a lot of success on Kickstarter right now. There's, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a nice following for, for independent comics, for creator owned comics, for comics that, that mean something. And a lot of the, our friends have found success recently on Kickstarter. You know, Leona Kangas with True Cult, um, mm-hmm. uh, Aubrey Sitterson with uh, Beef Bros, which I'm so freaking ready yes. for my Beef Bros to come yeah, in. Bros. Yeah. I so love freaking that. Dude, ready. That trailer he did, that like that, four that was trailer. enough. <laughs> yeah, that's I was like, needed. Can I get that on Blu-ray, like signed with a slip, please? Like that would be amazing. Like that was like the best piece of comic promo I've ever seen. Stan Lee is just like flipping in his grave right now. Why right. didn't I do something like that? Yeah. Like that, that was amazing. You know, David Pepose has been doing things on Kickstarter yeah. and I think it's a great way. There are like people I found out we had a cat. Uh, God, I can't remember her name. Comic Uno. She was on the channel. She was talking about her book, like father, like daughter. And uh, oh my goodness. Like she was like, there are people that just read like they're fans of just Kickstarter comics. Like they just yeah. go to Kickstarter and like, I couldn't keep up with it. So I try not to pay as much attention, but when I see a name of, of a friend or someone I know when it's like you or Aubrey or, or, or Liana or something, I'm like, I'm there. I'm 100% there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're just ready. So I, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful 
wonderful thing to do and, and get your fans to direct to direct to directly support you and, and help fund the book. It makes us all feel like we're a part of it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's super fun. I like it. And I like it when I get my name in the back and all kinds of weird stuff. Like, Look, there's my name, you know, like well, it's so <laughs> weird, but like, I don't know. I just like, I never had a letter printed in a comic. So it's just the yeah. closest I've ever gotten. But now I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat. Never had a letter printed. I've never sent one though. So I've I don't only, know if it's my fault. I think I've sent like four or five here and there. But it's always to I, like buddies books. And so I think that they're always like, yeah, I'm not going to put my buddies thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, you ever have a letter printed in a comic? Uh, I, I, I've, I've had two actually. Um, nice. One, your big time over here. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they're going over pretty, hard. Uh, special. <laughs> yeah, I go over hard. Yeah. Um, uh, one was in uh, uh, Shutter, uh, the the Joe Keating, uh, uh, oh, okay. uh, Layla Del Duca book, um, and uh, I had I had met Joe a little bit before, but uh, uh, the, there was an issue that came out right around when my father passed, and it was about their you know the main character's relationship with their father and certain things like that, and I was just letting him know how deep you know that because it you know it I don't know it was really good timing and you know really hit pretty hard. And everything and then uh 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 the other one was uh in strayed that comic about the you know the oh, telepathic yeah. cat um uh the the writer carlos Cafani uh asked for pictures of people's cats because he was you know getting the letters page ready for the last issue and and uh and i uh, took a picture of my cat put it up and he and he put it up there with uh you know with my email and everything like that it was i don't know i was pretty excited about that so nice now I do have my picture in the back of two comics. I, yeah. I'm in the back of New Avengers Volume Two, either issue three or four. It's the one with Wolverine on the cover because they mm -hmm. Marvel had this whole send in your picture and we'll choose you, and so they have a bunch of pictures of people, and I'm one of them. That's but then cool. I'm in the back of uh, Unearth Number Two. There's a picture of me with a copy of Unearth at the comic yeah. shop, and so they put that in there, and I'm like. So I should bring those to the next con, Brian, and actually tr charge people, and I can sign them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I was like, going to see if you would set me up a table at the deep when that shutter issue came out, and I would sit there with that stack, you know. And <laughs> I had I don't know if I've ever told you this, Robbie. You might think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm technically a canonical character in Marvel uh, continuity. Uh, oh, did, Don, did did DC put you in something? Yeah, he did. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange 367. Uh, there's a, a one-off stupid gag of a demon named Justin who beats up Doctor Strange for two hours. <laughs> nice. Really? Yeah. I have yeah. that issue. He has Mephisto, <laughs> like he's battling against Mephisto and he's like trying to throw out, off all the, like the standard spells that he does and Mephisto's not being affected by him. And he's like, what's wrong? strange like uh here i've got a spell that works every time and he says by the hairy fist of justin <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just this this demon arm that comes in and punches dr strange in the face and then you flip the next page and the other arms punching in the other way and it's a and he says that'll it's like two hours later and it's like that'll do justin thank you and that's it that's all ah, I am. that is amazing that's awesome I, dude i i did have <laughs> I think I have like five people ask me to sign that issue before. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys right now. I'm gonna tell you guys right I'm gonna now. Need that Doctor Strange Doctor Strange 367, the first MC or Marvel Universe appearance of Justin the Demon, right? <laughs> you know that Mephisto's coming in the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. <laughs> we know that Doctor Strange is going through the multiverse of madness, right? We just created a spec book. It's gonna be on Comic yeah. Tom's list next week. You just wait and see. Doctor Strange 367. There you I go. sold my Kate's uh, Strange run. So now I'm going to have to get that one before this <laughs> really hits. Okay. So if anybody from the deep's watching right now, grab it, put it in my box at cover price because next week it's going up because we're specking on the first appearance of Justin the Demon. <laughs> what if they did hey. that? What if some like some writer was like reading those? Because like sometimes I feel like these Hollywood writers they give them a handful of comics they probably skip through them and what yeah. if this guy like what if one writer comes across like what if sam raimi comes across that book and goes justin the demon i just love that and yeah. what if you wind up in there i love the hairy fist of justin it's so it's so catchy 
<laughs> that sounds yeah. like something Sam Raimi would do. You just wait and see. You know, and, and people at Marvel watch us, I know, because they quoted me one time. Marvel quoted me on a book that I gave a bad review. Because oh, in my bad in my bad review, I said, if you're really into Cree and scroll stuff, you should pick this up. And that's the quote that they pulled. And I was like, well, at least Marvel's watching. That's funny. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching right now, give Justin a book. Like he should be what what Marvel book would you want to do? We probably asked you this before. I would Marvel. love to see your take on Dark Hawk. By the way, oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> I would, yeah, I love the obscure characters. Like I thought, um, not that she's super obscure, but like Magic would be a cool one. I've got some ideas that I could do with her. Like deep, you know, like deeply flawed characters are my my favorites. Um, Marvel's full of those, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, as as far as like mainline, like Doctor Strange would be a a, a favorite of mine. <laughs> Probably, yeah, Doctor Strange, if I had to pick, like, a mainline character. Hell, yeah. Doctor Strange, would you bring back Justin the Demon? <laughs> this <laughs> no, is that your he... first arc? He goes for revenge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, I would probably, you know, I'd probably keep the dog that Donnie invented in there. What's his name? Batsy or bats. something like that? Just bats. bats. That's... Yeah, just bats. I think I've seen him recently in something. Yeah. I don't I remember Donnie's, what it was. I think Donnie's been putting him in, like, here and there in like the king of king of black yeah, they, he showed up in a king of black book that's what it was yeah. did you finish king of black do you are you caught up on it i've read issue three three or okay. four was the last one i read and i don't know how many there's gonna be i barely read big two books anymore or really books like i <laughs> writing books makes it so you don't read very many of them oh i got gotcha. you yeah the, the fifth and final issue came out last week or the week nice. before something like that um so that was cool. I mean, I'm eager to see what's next because I think Donnie did a great run on Venom there. Um, yeah, I just saw last night he posted on Twitter that he wrote his final, his final Venom arc. Left. Like he wrote his final words of Venom last night. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. It's it's it was a nice run though. It was the best Venom run I've ever read, and I've read every single Venom comic. So I mean, I'm a I'm a nut for that character. Um, big and bright things, I'm sure for him. Um, speaking of writing so much, like do you got anything coming up, anything in the works? Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to launch another Kickstarter and I'm hoping it's going to be this summer. And, um, yeah, I was actually just writing some of that right before the show here. It's going nice. to be my, uh, you know, funny enough, since we were talking about Marvel and stuff, it's going to be my, my take on original superheroes. So be ready for nice. that. Oh man, Justin's take on OG, original created superheroes. That sounds very exciting, young Here, man. Do you, have, do you have your Twitter pulled up, Robbie? No, but I can. Here, I'll send. Um, I'll send you two images. Justin's weird stretching on me, y'all. This is awesome. I love it. <laughs> I just I like sending out teases. You know, where's your Twitter? <laughs> I got it pulled up. I'm ready, brother. I'm All waiting right. for it. I'm scrolling. Here we go. First one. Uh -oh. I like getting live reactions too. Those are always fun. Oh yeah, live reactions. Up, oh, yeah, up. that's what this is. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Who's that artist? Is oh, uh, I see it. I see the name down there. Is yeah, that the name down there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Do you want to take a stab at pronouncing it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kukaj. It's not horrible. It's actually it's weird. It's Jimmy Kutsai. Uh, Kutsai. I would have never have gotten Kutsai out of that. Yeah. <laughs> I see so it K now though. K A C A J. Uh, and you can find him on Twitter at like I think it's just Jimmy Kutsai Art. Oh. And he's phenomenal. And he, me and him are going to be bringing some thunder on that book. Bro, that looks like the Baxter building. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we've got... Weird stretch, y'all. I saw something you haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> and and he won't send it to you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't. He won't. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Next week, we'll, be, we'll have Joe Corallo on the show next week, and he'll be like, 
I'll be talking about how awesome Beckstar was, and he'll be like, Brian, I'll be like, what'd you think, Brian? He'll be like, you never sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. It sounds good. I think it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, just to switch gears slightly, I do have a sports question since both of you guys are on. Um, you know, uh, Russell Wilson – Mm -hmm. Made some waves when he accepted his Walter Payton Man of the Year award uh, by claiming he didn't have adequate protection as part of his acceptance for the award, which was a pretty odd place to do that. And so then they started talking about his agents started talking about trades and two of the four destinations were the Cowboys and the Raiders. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't I sure if uh, if uh, uh, either of you like got even you know any emotional reaction to hearing that he'd be interested in going to the team. For me, as far as being a Raiders fan, I was like, you know, I kind of, I actually like Derek Carr quite a bit as our quarterback. Like, I know he he throws away some games and he's not perfect, but I think he's a pretty damn fine quarterback overall. So, like, I'm not looking for the Raiders to trade him away, but, like, I'll take Russell Wilson, you know. And so when I saw that, I was like, if it happens, great. If not, I'm, a, I'm okay. As for me, I'm happy that we made the deal with Dak. So, yeah. Uh, man, I yeah, hope that was, that was part of that. And, or the leg. I'm sorry. I just hope that Dak recovers from that leg. That was awful. Well, they seem yeah. to say that he's doing just fine. Like, it's like super good. I mean, I think Dak is, I think he's got a bright future. And uh, I'm just, we need some defense. That's what we need. Yeah, we need do. some defense. Yeah, you do. I mean, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What? What? Whatever. Why? Why are you flexing on us, Brian? Over hard with your like. Oh, I'm a Seahawks fan. We got Russell Wilson. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. I just was wondering because you know, like I didn't. I never thought he would leave this season because the Seahawks would have to give up, you know, a quarter of their cap space <laughs> uh, to trade for him. But uh, I do think it might be his last season in Seattle. So I don't know. Depends on how this one goes. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know, Russell. I mean, he throws on the one yard line. So, I don't know. Dak is Maybe younger, know and there's 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 longer for Dak's career to go and flourish, and he could be like the Troy Aikman of whatever it decade is, this is the coming. Start up. of his season last year was unbelievable. Yeah, he too bad we so lost all those tired. games. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the problem is because we were we were so down in all those games. Yeah. So then, like their defense kind of like eases up on us, right? They give up small yardage, and it just. Yeah. He's amazing at coming. Like, that's the thing, though. And I don't want to go through the same shit. I think Dak is something special. I'm an SEC guy. We're all down here, right? So, like, you know, I'm an Auburn guy. And when he played at Mississippi State, like, I, I fucking hated him, right? But, like, when he signed with the Cowboys, I was super happy. But I've done, I've gone through this with Tony Romo. There are moments where Romo felt so clutch, right? Like, oh, man, we got it this year. And then just, no. Thank you, by the way, Travis, one of our mods throwing out the link in the chat for everybody to check out silent night. Thank uh, you. Tom Robbie, Zine about mental health. Yeah, you were bringing up the hot start and that you, that uh, they lost all the games there. Uh, you still owe me uh, Taco Bell for the one against the Seahawks. Oh yeah. I do still owe you a Taco Bell lunch. Don't I? Let's go yeah. do that soon. I don't know Brian. if this is the Let's right place to bring that up. But it's yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. as good as, as any, you know, <laughs> by the way, Justin, one thing you need to know about Brian is, you know, I'm a Cowboys fan and he's a Seahawks fan. You're a Raiders. You know, we respect that. But like, I have to hear this dude just whine every football season about how, oh, the Cowboys are on again this year. They're on again this Sunday on Fox, even though they're not even going to be in playoff contention. And my Seahawks game is on and they all they want to play is. And I'm like, yeah, dude, people want to see the Cowboys or they want to see them just to even, you know, just shit all over. Them. Yeah. I mean, I mean I have to deal though, with that. Like, they'll, be like, they'll be like the three and 10. Cowboys playing the four and ten Giants, and it's like, hey, game of the week. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, it is the game, <laughs> of the, and, they, and they got they got Buck and Aikman on it. You know, yeah, man, yeah, well, let's do it, Brian. You should move to my my area because all I hear is people bitching that all they see is Seahawks games because they're considered the that. closest the closest local team, even though being in like central Oregon, I'm literally kind of halfway between, you know, Washington and California. So you could almost pick any of the like what six teams in California and it would make just as much sense. Or now, yeah. you know, you could choose, you could choose Vegas just saying, but yeah, yeah we get Seahawks games every week here just about. 
is what the yeah, local Yeah, when I visited are. up during football season, uh, yeah, I'm a Seahawks fan because you know my dad's side of the family is all from there. So yeah, I, it, it's kind of neat getting to watch them, watch them there and everything. But part of it's now just kind of a running joke. So you know, uh, <laughs> so nice. Uh, yeah. So are you making any making any plans to try to see him in Vegas or? Absolutely. I mean, like you know, when COVID's not a thing. Um, if, and they open, and they're able to open up the stadium and actually have games. Yeah, I would. I really want to go over there. It's, you know, a day flight there and back, and you know, it would, I've always wanted to see a professional football game, but never have. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a whole lot of fun. Uh, definitely live. I mean, yeah, it's it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, is it? Is that stadium done? Did they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was it... supposed to open last year. They oh, sold, okay. They, they still sold season tickets and everything, and then everything happened and had to have no fans in the stands for the, the opening season of the stadium. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was thinking, uh, I definitely want to go out there. You know, you know, some, you know, you can find pretty cheap tickets to Vegas a lot of times and everything, but yeah. Also, uh, um, one of my friends lives in uh, Zion. Uh, well, he lives in uh, St. George, Utah. And that's only like, so, I mean, like you can kind of go to Vegas and then like, you know, also hit, you know, Southern Utah and, you know, yeah. Northern Arizona, you know, all that, you know, insanely beautiful, <laughs> you know, part of the country too. So, so yeah. I, grew, I grew up in, in that, in the whole Northwest. So yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I'm familiar. I've never been out that way. Never. I've been not, out to. Not till San September. Utah. Uh, yeah, in September, that's that's the plan, right? We we'll see if it works out. Um, I think we can make it happen, though. PCP Army does a lot of a lot of cool things. I think we can get this funded, get it happening. I think so. Yeah, yeah uh, watch any good movies lately, Justin? Yeah, whether always. they're new or old, you know, whatever. Dude, like one of the movies that you know, I actually you'll be great to talk to about this. I think, and I haven't had enough people to talk to about this because, like, when I start talking about it, they're like, "Oh, I don't want to watch that." Uh, I watched this movie that's like one of the most banned movies of all time. I watched this with Val, uh, my artist on Finger Guns, uh, and it was like on a whim. We were just chatting one night, bullshitting, and he was where I was like, "What, what, like, what horror movies you you?" been looking to watch and he told me about this one and i was like i'm down and so we just watched it and it it's something else like it is a a, um, a measurement in how much you can handle <laughs> it's and it's scary accurate to today's political climate it's this movie called the devils it's from 1951 or Ooh. 71 sorry 1971 so it's 50 years old and it's on shutter right now. It's in a really weird, small aspect ratio. So some people really hate that, but I, I adjusted just fine. Um, and yeah, it's like, it's based on these true events that happened in France where like this one dude who was, I always, I call him hot priest. That's the way he's huh. viewed early on in the, in the thing where like all these nuns have the hots for this priest. And it causes a, you know, nuns can't be having the hots for anybody. Yep, that's the one. Ooh, and Oliver Reed's in it. It's nuts, man. That Ken Russell, the director, he's like one of England's most, uh, like, controversial directors of all time. But yeah, it's like this whole thing where these this one dude who was mad at this hot priest for not letting him destroy his town when their governor died. You know, there's like this weird level of, of politics in there early. He's mad, so he takes advantage of like when one of the nuns starts acting kind of crazy and says that she's like obsessed with this hot priest. And so she has to, like, she can't not think about him. And, and so it's like he's possessed her. And so then they like exercise her in front of everyone. And they all freak out. And then they end up like exercising the whole entire coven, coven of nuns there. And like, it gets very wild, like none orgy and all this crazy stuff. It's oh. and yeah, but it's Shudder. good. Like I, I know, like when I you sell it on like the controversies of the film and like and all that. It's really weird. Yes, you do have to watch this movie now. It's no, I mean, you, like you dude, sold me on none orgy, bro. I'm just gonna <laughs> say that. I was yeah, 
I was like, well, and I got to see that. <laughs> I found I found out the next day, like, you know, both of us were like, wow, that was a hell of a movie. And it's and we were both we both agreed that, like, overall, it's a really good film and like a very interesting story. And like the acting in it is really good, to be honest, like the main character, Hot Priest, he speaks very Shakespearean. Um, nice. He's very well Hot presented Priest. and stuff. Yeah, that's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, <laughs> like, like I said, like you'll see like sad because like I said, it's based on true events. You'll see how history is repeating itself in this film. There's a freaking kangaroo court of Ku Klux Klan members, or at least like they're wearing giant Ku Klux Klan hoods. Wow. That like convict this dude, yeah, based on a whim. It's it's nuts. Like great movie, great movie. I'm I'm definitely gonna check that out. You know, I've been my buddy Dylan, who's in the show right now. There's Dylan's horror show right there. We do a show every Saturday night on his channel. We talk about horror movies. Uh, This week, by the way, we're talking about Child's Play, the whole franchise. And uh, he disagrees with me, but Bride of Frank, uh, Bride of Chucky is where it peaks. I think like it's 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 all downhill from there. But I'm watching Cult tonight, so we'll see how it goes. But uh. He's always on me about getting Shutter. He's like, you got to watch the Creep Show show. And I'm just, I, when people tell me I got to watch something, like I I don't want to watch it. Like I'm weird. Like I like I, I got this weird, like not for the good of me rebellious streak. You know, mm-hmm. someone's like, Robbie, you should get more vitamins. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do what you tell me. You know, things like that. Throw these vi- uh, Flintstone vitamins away now. <laughs> yeah, right. I do take gummy vitamins, by the way. Like I, I'm that... I'm that almost 40 year old dude that's that takes gummy vitamins, but <laughs> nothing wrong with it, man. Nothing. nothing it's a wrong. treat. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's a treat after lunch. You know, I have my two gummy vitamins and I, I just feel better about myself. My ginkgo biloba <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and my heartburn medication anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, what the hell was I even saying? I don't know. Shutter. Um, uh, oh yeah. Shutter. He's always, he's always telling me to get shutter to watch creep show, but now you've given me a reason to get shutter. Honestly, I, have to watch I love Shutter. It's it's six. Like if you buy, if you do the annual subscription, it's six bucks a month. Oh, that's easy. Or, no, I'm wrong. Four seventy five a month. What? Yeah, Bro, that's the nothing. Annual subscription. And that's like one month of cable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like it's totally worth it. They have a lot of really good movies, good shows, good originals. Uh, if you get it, hit me up. I'll I'll give you some recommendations. Nice. That, that I got from, I get a lot of good recommendations from Val. He's like the king of horror. That dude knows everything. Hell yeah. We got to bring Val on the channel one time and talk horror then. Yeah, you do. <laughs> He'd love yeah, it. We should bring you and Justin on to Dylan's horror show and we can just like mad stretch over horror. Like pick the most gnarly. Maybe we should, re- maybe we should review the devils. <laughs> I, me, me and Val would be down. We definitely <laughs> would do that. All right. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Mandy, the, like, uh, but they got Holliston, oh, I know. Uh, so, like, if you've never seen Holliston, it's like the sitcom about horror fans. And so, like, nice. it's, it's from Adam Green. It's really, really good. I've watched it all. It's fantastic, actually. Um, they get, like, all the time people go, like, well, that's on Shudder. Because we cover all these movies. And I'll be like, well, this is Italian. I don't know if it's easily streamable. And they're like, oh, that's on Shudder. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> Shudder's really good about having, like, a really widespread, like, uh, like they have a good amount of foreign films because horror is done well all around the world all around the world i'm a big fan of italian and japanese horror in particular yeah really good stuff really good stuff brian what's the last great horror movie you watched um was it over hard Two? hard boiled beyond yeah something like that yeah something like that <laughs> uh well over hard two, uh, two, i mean i did watch two over too easy Uh, i did watch um uh suspiria um the new one or the classic uh the classic one classic one okay uh i'm on i might give the new one a shot uh i really like one so good so good the 2018 one yeah it's different it's yeah it doesn't I feel like it doesn't really capture the original, the seventies one, which is, uh, I always forget the name of that, of like the Italian horror genre that that fits in. Giallo. Yeah. That the Giallo, it, it doesn't really have that vibe to it, but man, is it good. 
And Dakota Johnson in it is fan fucking tastic. Excuse my language if I'm not supposed to drop the F bomb. Oh, bro, I've dropped it like three times tonight, if 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 not more. Uh, you're okay. you can say whatever the hell you want here, Justin. Uh, for yeah. the most part, but you're not going to say anything that we 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 we're not cool with. I'm sure. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here in the first place. But uh, I have heard the soundtrack for that one. I do like. I like Tom York, so yeah. Well, I was going to say, like Tom York did the score, and like the score is cool. I haven't watched it yet because Dario Argento Suspiria, Justin's like probably my favorite horror film out there. Like yeah. I, I adore Giallo, I adore Italian uh, Italian horror, Argento in particular. Um, on Dylan's horror show on my birthday weekend, we're covering just Argento as a director. Um, you know, it, <laughs> he's a weird dude. But uh, his movies are like Suspiria has got this dreamlike quality. I hear yeah. that doesn't come across in this one, but you're not. I don't. I would. I would probably not be down with the idea of them trying to replicate what is so essentially Argento, right? Yeah. But try to do their own thing. And isn't Tilda Swinton in it? Yes. Yeah, that's enough for me. That's. Yeah. I mean, Tom York it's, and Tilda Swinton. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, and I think kind of along the same lines of what you're yeah. saying, like yeah. I by doing essentially their own thing. Like if you go into it and just like let go of the name and look and watch it as like its own thing, I think you'll really dig it. Just don't, I remember, don't think of the original at all. Like basically I think the only similarity that I, that I could remember to derive from the two is that they take place in a, like a, a ballerina dance yeah, school. Like a dance school. They, they still have the witchcraft element though. Right. There's, um, I mean, like there's supernatural stuff about. That's what I'll say. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm good. intrigued. I'm intrigued. It's, I feel like good. I gotta. I do have a I question. gotta watch it by the time we do that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I do have a question for you, Justin. Uh, Robbie refuses to watch The Lighthouse, but does that count as a horror movie? Yeah. I'd See, say so. Robbie, like it's it's just not. It might not be a traditional horror film. It doesn't have a lot of like there's no jump scares or anything like that, but it is a, like, it's a mind fuck of a movie and it's definitely about going mad and about, you know, like horrific things. If they were, if they, if you experienced them firsthand, it's a, it's one of my favorites of that, like 2019, whenever that came out, it was one of my favorites of that year. I just think it's rather yeah. pretentious of the director to do a four, three aspect for his, his Snyder cut. So I just don't know if I want to get into that. Well, it's not a Snyder cut because he didn't get that's $70 a, million dollars to remake it a second that's time. A, that's right. a joke because it's in the same, it's like in a four yeah. by three, right? Right. Yeah. No, I actually have a copy of it on Blu-ray. I want to watch it. I wanted to watch it the first time I saw the trailer. Willem Dafoe, like just looks so like he does such an amazing job. How long we've we been on this rock two years. Yeah. Two months, whatever. I don't know. But like, I want to watch it. It's here. But Brian, you know, Dylan's got me watching like eight Chucky movies a week. Like <laughs> it, it's hard right now, man. Yeah, and, I, I get it. Ugh. I get it. Yeah. I just, I had a, I was, uh, it was, I got to watch it over Christmas break. Uh, I had COVID. My whole family had COVID over the break. We we're all good. Uh, wasn't the worst thing in the world, but uh, it was a good uh, it was a good relief because like I've been wanting to watch it for like six or seven months and I finally just went, Oh, I can watch it <laughs> now. You know, I, I mean, it was still on Amazon prime and everything like that. So yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. I absolutely love that movie. Um, and, uh, I, it's great. I was sick. So like, I'm going to use this as an excuse, but like, I didn't realize how much it was influenced by, you know, different mythologies and everything like that until like the very last scene. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you know, it just, I saw that and I went, oh, that's like the, oh, wait, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, there's, I mean, there's so much in it. <laughs> there's so much. There's certain shots in that movie that are ripped straight out of classic, uh, like, art pieces and stuff mm -hmm. and that are based on, like, you know, mythology and stuff. It's really, really cool. It does, I feel like it's one of those movies that, like, you can get as little or as much out of it as you want. Mm -hmm. That's like, awesome. There's an extent of which you won't get anything out of it because you're going to go, what the hell did I just watch? What happened? <laughs> but uh, but there's there's a lot to like dig back through. It's like I've rewatched it. I think that movie is probably one of my most watched movies over the last few years because I, um, I think I've watched it like six times now. I've, I've just oh, wow. watched it with a bunch of people that are like, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm like, you must. So let's watch it. And then we do. And We're by the way, weird stretch, Jennifer. Weird stretch. 
Uh, <laughs> now you've got me intrigued. You had me at Nun Orgy. Now you got me at Robert Pattinson jerks off t- dreaming about mermaid pus. Dude, now I'm like, I have to understand what that's about. <laughs> that That's not even the only masturbation scene that, that Robert Pattinson has <laughs> in that movie. I love it. You're like, that's True. not even the only one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, one of my, it, that movie has one of my favorite closed captions of all time because I always like watching with closed captions on. I'm, I'm a nerd like that. It's like you're uh, reading the script, right? Like, it's like you're reading the script almost. Like, I well, love it. Like, I like, like, uh, you catch, like, the captions often will tell you things that, like, you don't hear, like, yeah. that you can't hear unless yeah. you're blasting that thing or have headphones on so like I, between that and then like you know i have a kid so i get easily distracted etc i just like captions and the i believe the first masturbation scene uh it, it has the term it says i believe it's soft clapping <laughs> <laughs> i died i died i was like i love this movie <laughs> soft clapping that's, that sounds soft. like that's like it's gonna be the name of one of Justin's future books. You just wait and see. Soft yep. clapping on Kickstarter right now. Minimum, there'll be like a poster in the background. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Got to make that happen. It feels like Soft. it feels like an internet term that kids would make up so their parents don't know that they're talking about jerking yep. it or something. Yeah, I got to go soft clap now. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna go to his room and just. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I get it. I get it. Yeah. I understand. I get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if I want to watch this movie now. No, I do. I want to see Batman jerk it. I really do. That that sounds that sounds it's like Batman <laughs> damn number one, right? That's like, you know, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I'm just <joking. laughs> I missed I missed out on that first printing, man. I was oh, I, I sold the hell out of mine. I was like, how much is it worth? I'll sell it. I was <laughs> like, it's okay. It's an okay book. It's it's okay. He was it's on, right it's as five stars. Bat peen, come on. <laughs> the bat pole, right? I, yeah. My favorite was Batman and Throbbing. Ooh, I like that. I like Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lil Wayne was good. I like that. Yeah, one. That's yeah. a classic. Yeah, people. Uh, the I was at a uh, Lexington Comic Con after that one came out, and Brian Azzarello was there, and and I was listening to uh, them. Like a guy brought that CG seed and mm-hmm. wanted to get it signed by Brian Azzarello. And I can't remember exactly the cost <laughs> they charged him for opening it up, witnessing it, and having Brian Azzarello sign it. But I mean, I want to say it was like 150 bucks. Yeah, it's just crazy. for to do all that stuff to sign it. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> I don't know. Fun I'd fact, want him to sign Brian the Azzarello. actual. I'm sorry. Go He's, ahead. Brian Azzarello is a is a Raiders fan. Just saying. Ooh, really? Yeah, he and I talked about the is Raiders it, okay. for like. Outside in like downtown Seattle after Image Expo one year. That was oh, that's awesome. really cool. I met him one time in like 2002 in Chicago. He signed my 100 Bullets Volume One, and uh, he seemed more nervous to meet me than I was to meet him, which was weird to me. Uh, but that was <laughs> early in his career, right? So I I think Azarell is a really solid writer. I the way he can turn dialogue like. Sometimes it, it, it comes across as it can be a, a little obnoxious in certain books, but the way he can use wordplay sometimes, um, especially in some of the hundred bullets dialogue, I think is just masterful. I like, I freaking love it. Yeah. I, I liked, um, I don't remember if I read the whole thing and I, I know I have like a hardback cover of this, but his, uh, his wonder woman, like the new 52 run that he did the blood. That, that was, was- pretty good from what i remember that's my favorite yeah. wonder woman run i have ever read yeah. and i love the greg rucka stuff and i love the george perez stuff and i even like the john byrne stuff but like his new 52 wonder woman with uh cliff chang and yeah. i think to- tony akins i think fan freaking tastic i that's my favorite interpretation uh clever interpretations of of the greek gods and the mythology and you know, bringing in yeah, the idea that war. she's, yeah, <laughs> war is great, right? He's the old guy with bleeding feet, you know, yeah. or Hades as the kid with the, the melted candles over mm-hmm. his eyes and things like that. And they, they all have subtle references to certain symbolism and things like that. And and the idea that that's the run that brings in the idea that Diana is a demigod, you know, and that yeah. the bracelets hold back her power. You know, and like, I think that's so freaking awesome. I love it. Yeah, well, that was one of my favorite parts because 
you know, the original creator, I always forget his name, but like Wonder William Woman. Something. Yeah. William Mol- Molston. 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 Marston. Molston. Marston. Marston. Yeah. Uh, like there's the whole bondage aspect to Wonder Woman's original character. And so having like the bracelets become a, like it's still a symbol of bondage, but like it's literal fat, like, you know, literal, not a literal fight, but you know what I mean? Uh, yeah literalized in like yeah in that and then like oh it keeps her powers back and like so like yeah like i don't know this kind of like the the men writers that have always been writing that and, and subjecting her to being nothing more than a bondage character to stare at uh you know which is not all of them but you know most of them yeah uh, <laughs> it definitely in the early days that was yeah. some uh some stuff there's like there I've, i haven't watched it but apparently there's a documentary about that dude and and the you know his creation of Wonder Woman whatnot. There was very interesting stuff. <laughs> there was a non doc like a like a scripted movie about it. Okay, or maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Then I think there's both. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's also a documentary. Um, okay, well, but yeah, yeah I... it was like Meet the Mars or something like that. It had some kind of play on his last name and how he like because his wife was heavily involved in that and like they had. Yeah, there's this whole weird thing with them. Like, there's a lot of story there to discover in the background of, of him. I can't remember the name of the book, but I read a book about uh, about the you know the history of Wonder Woman and and him and his uh, yeah, his situation because he was married, but he also had a, a you know another a woman that would move in and out that would you know it was uh, uh, and he had you know kids with her, kids with the you know his wife, and it was a Pretty strange things, but he also uh, he also developed the lie detector, and so that was kind yeah. of part of the you know the uh, one of the two you know he created one of the versions of the lie detector, which I'm not sure was the one that actually caught on that they still use today or whatever. No, because his was he had this like thing where he wanted to rope it around you. It was really weird. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was yeah. it was you know well uh, yeah I don't know but yeah it was the lasso truth thing kind of you know creeped into it's the a joke is a joke man. It's <laughs> just a bit, Brian. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, no, it's good. It's good. But yeah, that run is uh that was the only comics I brought to have Brian Ezra sign. Partly because uh uh I had kind of forgotten that he wrote that Dark Knight <laughs> uh the third Dark Knight return series. Um but uh but it, yeah that, that run is absolutely phenomenal. He said uh he told me that while uh he was getting him signed that he he had a pitch for a different character and uh uh, I guess DC already had somebody else in mind for that character. And so they asked him what he would do with Wonder Woman. And he just basically kind of ripped that off the cuff. <laughs> he said, you know, there's kind of the basics of that. And they immediately gave that to him. And then uh, I asked, well, what was the other character? And he was like, I can't tell you that. But no, he was, he was super nice. I, I, I really enjoyed talking to him. Though. I mean, it was yeah. Like, he was a nice dude. When I met him as well, I found the name of that movie. It's called professor Marston and the wonder women. Yeah, 62 ah. threw it out there, too. Yeah, there it is. Then Jennifer says he was basically in a triad relationship with his wife's wife. Nothing yeah, wrong with it. that. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah, nothing wrong. At the time, that was... Else. At the time, that was, I'm sure, considered a weird stretch. But nowadays, like, nah, like, that's... Yeah, triads and poly forms are... Yeah. Uh, it's way more acceptable than it used to be, and I think that's awesome. There's, there's many ways to love. There's many ways to read comics, right? There's many ways to enjoy horror films, right? So exactly. there you go. Do you guys hear that a uh, sci-fi channel is going to do a, a reboot of slumber party massacre in conjunction with shout factory who has all the Corman rights right now? No, um, but I hope, I hope that they focus heavily on slumber party massacre too. Bruh. That's, that's the best one. That is the best. Well, I haven't seen three. Okay. Because three, you can't stream anywhere. And like shout factory screen factory did a, a double feature of two and three. That's like 200 to $500 now. And wow. like, I'm not paying $200 for a slumber party massacre double feature. Yeah. But I almost spent $20 on a, on a DVD of slumber party massacre three. Cause I just want to watch it. Like, I'm sure it's not two. I actually like one. It's okay. I like the idea of the driller killer and how it's yeah. kind of a phallic symbol and they cut it in the middle. Like this movie and like, and it was, it was written to be a very feminist movie. And then Roger Corman's like, we got to put a lot of TNA in here to make it really sell. But like, it's written to be like this, like this very feminist, like interpretation of a slasher film. 
right? But part two, part two is wild. I yeah. love part two, bro. Part two is amazing, man. Yeah. It's on Amazon Prime if anybody wants to to check it out. Like seriously, it it's was. not a. It sounds like a dirty film, but it's it's not. It's it's really. I wouldn't say classy, but it's it's colorful. It's so freaking. I still don't even it's understand fun. if it is it real, Justin, or is it all in her head? What do you think? Because it's kind of an ambiguous ending, right? Yeah, I guess it probably goes for that. I would say it's in her head, I guess, but uh, who knows? That's not. Know, the, it, that's like was, the, that's the worst part to think about for that movie. I I just think about <laughs> the dance numbers. Uh, yes. <laughs> You know, and I mean, it's a guy named the Driller Killer with a guitar, like a devil guitar with a giant drill on the end. Like, I need nothing more. It's so freaking cool. It's so good. I'm not even kidding. And it's so post Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Like they do the dream sequences. Yeah. They got the cool colors. Like they just rented this house in suburbia somewhere and just put up a bunch of like pink lights. It's awesome. It's so freaking cool. So good, and yeah, yeah, the dance numbers. Oh, my God. Yeah, he does a whole musical number. He chases these girls while singing like a really <laughs> cheesy, like John Travolta rock number from the 80s. It's great. Yes, it's so great. Have you seen this movie, Brian? <laughs> I have not. No. You need to. It's, it's on now. Amazon Prime. It's on and Amazon it, Prime. I'm pretty sure it's still on Shutter as well. There you go. If, so if you're on there. They had to remind Shutter us. Though. It's a very it's a really a simple story. She's she's joking <laughs> on me because all these people ask me why I love decorum so much. And I'm like, because you're overcomplicating it. It's actually a very simple story about an assassin skilled hire, you know, training a new assassin. Everybody's after this egg, whatever. That's what led us to the question, Brian, by the way, of how do we like our eggs? Hmm. So just to ah! recap, just okay. to recap, Justin likes them scrambled. Oh, I like them over easy. And Brian likes them uh, over hard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> or burnt. Yes. So there you go. Or burnt. Sometimes I, I sometimes burnt is better. Justin, yeah, I know that you've been writing and you haven't had too much time to read, but what's the last great comic book that you read? New World. Uh Slaughterhouse Five. It's, Ooh, you, you just yeah. you just made Brian very happy, by the way. That's a great, great adaptation of of that book. Uh Ryan North just Killed it. It's so good. And yeah, the that's hardback. Ryan North. He's the yep. he's the squirrel girl guy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. If you have never met him, he's like six foot seven. He's huge. Oh wow. <laughs> he's like Jim <laughs> Shooter, right? Yeah. Great. I did a, super, super nice guy though. I did a panel with Jim Shooter. I thought fucking Boris Karloff was sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that one really, really stood out. Like that one uses the medium of comics in a way that I haven't seen in a while. Like, uh, there's some really cool stuff in there. And what else have I gotten? Oh, I just got a Kickstarter delivered, uh, the road, the, the bones of this place by Marie Anger. Did you get to okay. back that one? No, I did not. Uh, it was, it was a while ago. The campaign was probably like a year ago ish, maybe a little less. I don't want to like make it sound like we've been waiting so long. I get, I get so lost on how long I'm waiting for any Kickstarter. Cause sometimes it's two years legit. And other times they seem to show up within a couple of weeks. So you just never know what you're going to get. So yeah, I just right. like, I like forgetting about them and then getting them in the mail and be like, Hey, I got it's like cut. Christmas. So, it's like exactly. Christmas, man. I love it. Unexpected present to yourself. You're like, Hey, future me. I got you. There's this, uh, there's this yeah. Matt Kent, Jeff Lemire one I backed, and I'm like, stop sending me updates. I want to forget about it. I just want to, like, what's a Cosmic Detective? Is that what it is, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm one. just like, I just want well, to be surprised. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've backed uh, two other Matt Kent ones that were before that one, actually, that are still, like, they're getting close or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, I have one that's over uh, right at two years. But I did get one from Marie Anger, but I must have missed that one on the comic because the one I got was like a role-playing game kind of thing that was uh like casket a survivalist lane. yeah casket lane yeah, and that, yeah, that yeah was i just got that one actually, actually in the mail. that was before uh the the bones of this place okay okay yeah the bones of this yeah. place was like a pretty quick one i wish i had it up here it's a beautiful book it's hardback and it's like it's more landscape oriented, you know, that's so oh. like when you when you're flipping through it's like this instead of like a standard comic it's the other way. 
and it's got like the yeah. spine, the spy uh, cloth spine, so it doesn't bend. And yeah, it's a really good high quality book. I'm stoked I backed it. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, because that, that actually the casket land, I, I noticed like the way the printing on that was actually pretty pretty high quality. But one thing, uh, you know, she shares a studio with Matt Kent mm -hmm. um, there in St. Louis, and and uh, Matt Kent's first job out of college was actually in book binding. Oh, nice. Place. And so, like he, you know. Uh, you know, I don't know. He, he puts a lot of effort into what, <laughs> you know, what the finished product's going to look like and everything like that. And it, I, I don't know. I always think that's super cool, you know, because like, you know, getting high quality, that stuff's awesome. For sure. So, it's nice yeah. when you get something that that feels worth the money that you spent for it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I haven't finished that Slaughterhouse 5. I've read the original book. And uh, um, uh, but yeah, I, I agree uh, that it really leans into the comics medium really heavily. And, and I, like, as I was reading it, I, I, I it, it was probably 20 years ago when I read Slaughterhouse Five, the, I mean, the book, you know, um, yeah. but I can see where there's ways that it, you know, it could, you know, lend itself, you know, pretty, you know, pretty cleanly into comics and everything. But yeah, this is, it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, it takes me back to reading the book, but at the same time, it's, it seems really fresh, you know? And, yeah. And, uh, the, um, Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, I think the first thing that stood out that like stretched the use of the medium, there's like a timeline very early on in the book. I'm sure you've seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so cool. Like it just shows like a literal timeline of events that are going to happen or have happened. And it, cause it's this book, you know, that displaces, you know, this character that displaces in time over and over again. And uh, I don't know the way that like that did it really helped explain the concept of the book in a really cool way and show what's to come without over teasing it and i also loved how much he uses like the every time somebody dies he says the same thing i forget what it is though i think it was like oh, it's uh, like so it goes or yeah something like real like say la vie like yeah it's like so it so it goes or something it's like yeah, yeah. great book yeah. nice well and i think uh you know well speaking to you know the uh, Kickstarter. I mean, he, you know, a, a lot of Kurt Vonnegut's characters are, you know, also dealing with mental health issues too. And that's one reason why I've always liked reading Kurt Vonnegut is it's like getting these uh, people dealing with mental health issues and then like things get, can get pretty dark and everything like that. But there's always these, you know, these bright moments, <laughs> you know, and yeah. things like that. And it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just beautiful stuff. <clears throat> oh, really? I do want to point out that TM Nerdy says you're at 500, Jennifer. So, yeah, comics will break your heart. Just hit 500 subs here on YouTube. So I want to give a station out there. So now we now officially pause for station identification for Jennifer. Awesome. Congrats. That's super now, cool. I don't. Are you familiar with that channel, Justin? She's I'm in not. your neck of the woods. She's in your neck of the woods. Uh, you should definitely check out Comics Will Break Your Heart. I and will. uh you guys should uh should chat because I'm sure she would love to have you on the channel sometime. Huge congrats on 500. That's Hell awesome. yeah, she's she's a great commentator. She's got great taste. She was just recently here on the channel last Thursday, and uh, I don't want a weird stretch or fill her head with you know fill her head with more hot air or whatever. Um, I just, that sounded like I called her an airhead. I was referencing me getting a big ego when people tell me nice things about myself, but her conversation last week. I think has more views than my conversation with Rom V. So yeah. whatever you want to take of that, there you go. So there you go. Okay. But, You're a better hey, writer than Rom V, Jennifer. That's crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so since we last spoke to you, Justin, have you had any uh, paranormal experiences? Any, any, any alien visits? Any, any Bigfoot sightings out there in the Northwest? Not unless you count a bunch of deer in my neighborhood. <laughs> Ooh, that can be creepy though. And the like, I remember one time I was camping, and a fox shows up. I jumped up on the picnic table, bro. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even stretch. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't trust wild animals whatsoever. I, I have so. For those that don't know, I live in Oregon, where uh, marijuana is very legal, and that helps me a lot with my anxiety and my depression. And so I partake. Uh, and the other, like two weeks Station. ago, Station. I, I'm standing outside, smoking a bowl. And I live, like, my front door faces 
this I'm like down this weird alleyway that's not on the main street. There's like barely any light that makes it back here. So it's a weird, creepy spot. And yeah, Oregon. I love Oregon, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, like I'm just standing there and a deer straight up just walks back in my little like weird alleyway and just walks past, doesn't pay any any mind to me. I just sat there, kept smoking. <laughs> it was like that was a weird, weird interaction. Like, I mean, That's I'm great. glad it, it didn't mess with me or anything. Obviously, I don't want to get mauled, but. but. <laughs> mauled by a deer. Man mauled by a deer in Oregon. <laughs> it happens. At a was, was he so, too high? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drugs sleep to deer death. <laughs> <Don't you know? laughs> this is your brain on drugs. And it's just some dude with antlers shoved in his chest. Oh man. I love it. You should have started. I would, if it was me, I would have started lightly singing to see if I could have a Disney moment and have like a musical number where the birds and the deers and the rabbits all show up and we're all singing and, and doing laundry. <laughs> well, I figured you could take that story and do a Snyder cut with reefer madness with that in it. Right. With the deer mauling in there, you know, redo that. Faster. Play faster. <laughs> yeah. Play faster. I want to do a remake of Re Reefer Madness. And then somebody did it, but they did a, a crappy version of it. But I think it, there's a really good satirical take on Reefer Madness that has yet to been done. I yeah. think so. We Stoner genre that. needs respect. We should do that. You know, maybe, maybe maybe that's the next maybe maybe that's the first PCP Kickstarter. Screw the uh the the pog story that I'm I'm working on with Brooks. Uh, let's just do like a like some kind of weed centric thing. That would work. That would work in at least over half of the states in the United States. I'll just say that. Yeah. I'm in Alabama. We're not so lucky as you guys in Oregon. Uh, but we're surrounded by it. I'll tell you that. So it won't I be have long. Some Texas Texas friends that like every time that we go to get on, I'm like, hold on, let me get prepared. And they're like, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> they're so jealous. And I'm like, just move some, like move any direction. You'll find a state. Yeah. Right. The first time I talked to Bueller about going to visit him, and I was like, you know, I just, I don't, you know, there's things he was like, Oh, we know plump tons of coffee shops. You know, there's coffee everywhere. It's like, well, also isn't, you know, certain other herbal things, you know, legal there. <laughs> and then Bueller is like literally across the street. We'll take you there. Don't worry. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I live in a pretty small town. Yeah, it's like a hundred thousand people ish. So like not super small, but not big. And like three per street corner. I swear it's, you could literally throw a rock from my house. Every, and you'll everybody's in that game. It's like, a, it's like a vape shop here, well, the, Brian, you know? <laughs> yeah. So well, the last time I went, uh, was that in Portland? It was, I think 2017, but we were, uh, my wife and I were going driving down the coast, and and I mean you'd you'd see a town that that had three stores, and one of them was a weed store, the weed. right? I mean it'd have a gas station, weed store, and then you know maybe a general store or something yeah. like that. That was every single one. That's awesome. That was, I don't know. You cracked That's me so up. cool. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite term for weed? Uh, there's so many. I love hearing people's favorites. Mine Chiba. is the classic devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. I I like yes, Chiba. That Chiba is my favorite. My favorite. Chiba's been Chiba. my favorite one. Yeah, Chiba. I like going. There's that song too. That's like Chiba, give me Chiba. Because I, I used to be that guy that collected all the Himpolation albums and shit. Like, yeah, mm. yeah. I used to be. I used to call it Sweet Leaf a lot because of Sab the Black Sabbath song. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bueller says uh, that's the, the butthole surface Bueller cover. Says, that? Uh, the weed is the. Yeah, he, he goes. That's the name of the local store. The weed. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jennifer says, "Come to Portland for the strip clubs, comic shops, and weed shops." I don't know. Are those strippers wearing masks? <laughs> Actually, I saw this video from Portland where there was a drive-through strip club yeah, during the pandemic yeah, last year. <laughs> right when it started, they did a drive-through. I was like, "I love it." Get, People got to work, man. Yeah, get your work done. And hell yeah, man, we're sex positive safe. station. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, yeah, Actually, I'm so moving to a legal state. Answer, so. I was about to ask you, you work there. Do you, you still do? I do not right now. No. Okay. But you did, right? Yeah. It was the pandemic. I, I was between my son's home now. So I'm doing school with him uh, every day. And then uh, I didn't want to work with the public. So I asked to be taken off the schedule. and I'm permanently off the schedule now. 
I got you. I got you. I, I remember watching a documentary one time about the weed business and it was in Colorado specifically, but they were talking about like, because of all the regulations, like from seed to selling point, it's on camera, like the entire time, pretty much like it's always accounted for. Like it's yeah. so like, they're so like meticulous about it. And uh, Bueller says the stripes don't wear any, I think he means strippers. The strippers don't wear anything, anything. So I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and uh, Travis had a question for you. Uh, what about Canadian shipping for your Kickstarter, Justin? Oh, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, with this one, like I said, like this was kind of my small practice round for Kickstarter. So I, I elected to keep it as simple as possible. And so we're not doing international shipping. Um, but like Travis, I'll tell you what, man. You, you, you do it. You put in my address and I'll ship it to you. Or I'll get you one, Travis. How about that? I'll get you one, Travis. Don't worry. There we'll we get go. you one. We'll get I you one. Say, I'm trying. I've had of like only a few people. You know, I have some UK buds and and some Canadian friends that have said that have asked about it. And I try to like I want to try to work with people who, you know, maybe afterwards if I have some extra copies, I'll I'll sell them and ship ship them separately. So to anyone watching who's an international that wants a physical copy, you know, uh, after the campaign's over you know, it gave me like maybe a, a few weeks to, to see how many I have and stuff and hit me up on Twitter or something. And I'll, I'll work with people. I want to try and get this book into people's hands as best I can. We'll make sure you're taken care of Travis. Uh, yeah. We'll make sure you're taken care of. You, you just like, I'll, I'll, I'll holler at you, Travis. You just send me the money for the Kickstarter and then I'll make sure it gets to you. We'll cover it here at PCP. Don't worry about it. You're worth it, bruh. That's You've been up. one of our best guys, Travis. So we really do appreciate you. And everybody needs to check out TM Nerdy's channel. Why don't you go ahead and throw a link out there before we wrap up? And we are wrapping up. Justin, thank you so much for being here, homie. This has been an amazing conversation. Talking a little bit about finger guns. Talking a lot about your new Kickstarter. And just talking a lot about pop culture and what we love about it. Do you got any final yeah. thoughts? Anything you want to plug? Where can we find you on social? What's going on, Justin? Yeah, I'll mostly plug my social because that's where everything will follow. Uh, I'm on Twitter mostly. It's at emo comic writer. Pretty easy to remember. Um, and yeah, I'll throw things out there, and you know, I'll definitely I'll bug I'll bug Robbie again when the next campaign's ready to launch and stuff. Because uh, I'm really really stoked for that. That's the biggest thing that's coming up anytime immediately. Uh, like I said, it's going to be sometime this summer, hopefully superheroes as done by the dude who wrote that one book about sad teenagers. So nice. And I've seen some of the uh, artwork y'all it's great. And there's something that looks like the Baxter building. And I just love that. <laughs> just yeah. Love it's, it. it's going to be a good time. Uh, Don't worry. I'm not going to send it to Brian. So. <laughs> Hit me up, Brian. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, we, um, you know, I, without giving away the concept right now, I just I like to say like it's truly original superheroes. You know, if you think about how I went out of my way to do something unique and different, both with a Silent Night and Finger Guns, that's what I'm trying to bring to superheroes. So hopefully, it it translates. Very cool. Sounds great, Brian. Uh, any last thoughts? Any tips on over hard eggs and how not to burn them? Uh, don't no, pictures. don't listen to me. Yeah, yeah, it's the pictures. That, yeah, it probably, yeah, yeah, it totally threw me off. Uh, I was going to say, like, I remember last time we talked, uh, uh, I just, this popped in my head. Uh, um, I think we were talking about big two characters, and, and you brought up uh, Snowflame. Yeah. Was that the, yeah, the cocaine-powered superhero? I went afterwards, yeah. and I was looking up that first, uh, first appearance, uh -huh. um, and it was more expensive than the first appearance of Stick. From Daredevil, really? Because I, I was like, at the same time, I was trying to find his, and uh, I was like, "That is okay." <laughs> I'm really, it's because he was he was randomly in that Catwoman issue. That's why. Yeah, like, I was yeah, he had he's oh. had a new spark of fandom because he was featured recently. I was really pissed actually because that's like, <laughs> I want to do Snowflame, yo, yeah. like back up <laughs> off my my turf, get out of here. <laughs> like yeah. I called Snowflake, motherfucker. You better back, back the fuck off. I have a random YouTube video from like six years ago where I said <laughs> I called it. That should count as your ash can, right? Exactly. Yeah, no shit. 
I swear to God, if Marvel ever does Ghost Thrasher without me, I'm going to fucking sue. You just wait. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, my Snowflame story is going to be dope. Yeah. <laughs> well, just imagine yeah. Night Thrasher with the Spirit of Vengeance. There we go. Ghost, Ghost Thrasher, bro. Yeah. Ghost Thrasher. All right, anybody. Everybody, thank Justin. Oh, did you have another thing, Brian? Did you really have egg tips? I just want to say thanks again. Yeah. Uh, thanks. It was great talking to you. Know, great talking yes. to you. Y'all are great. Yeah, we'll have you on the show, even if you don't have a book to plug, Justin. We don't care. We just love hanging out and chatting. By the way, check out A Silent Night on Kickstarter. There's like 14 days left. There's a link in the description below. PCP Army, please represent and support and throw out a mad station for them. We really do appreciate you being here. Join us tomorrow night for the return to PCP Movie Night. We were talking about Portland and their amazing weed laws. Um, we're talking about Dazed and Confused tomorrow Damn. night because... 420's around the corner. And so, therefore, we have Perry from Perry Comics here tomorrow night. And we're going to be talking about Days and Confused, which is probably the movie I have seen the most oh, wow. out of any other movie. Like, my favorite movie may be Citizen Kane, but the movie I've watched the most is Days and Confused. I am literally like, I'm like a young woman at church camp watching The Princess Bride. I'm reciting every single line. And I say the Princess Bride thing because that was my experience with that. Anyway, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Brian. Next week, we got Joe Corallo on the show again. Beckstar is moments away. And also, Joe's going to be joining us for some movie reviews. That's right. He's going to be reviewing Mallrats and Southland Tales with us. All coming up on PCP Movie Night. Y'all, be excellent to each other. Party on. Stay true. And one more thing.